Greetings and welcome to Hexed Encountered. I'm Joe. In this video, we will be doing a playthrough. This is the first scenario from the game, The Great Battles of Alexander, The Macedonian Art of War. This is the first volume in The Great Battles of History from Mark Herman and Richard Berg and published by GMT Games. So as I mentioned, this is Aragon Valley. This is Upper Macedonia, 358 BCE. This is the Macedonians under uh, Alexander the Great's father, Philip, or Philip II, against the uh, Illyrians. So here in the red, we have our Macedonian deployment. And here in this like tannish color, we have the Illyrians. So you can see we have some phalanxes here in the middle of the line. They have some uh, hoplites with the big markers here as well on the other side. Uh, what else we have from the uh, Macedonians? We have some some uh, heavy infantry here, some hip hip past or hips past. <laughs> have a hard time reading that. It's uh, yeah, hips pat, hips best, I think is what those are. Those are heavy infantry. We have some cavalry here. We have some skirmishers here. Over here we have some peltasts. And more skirmishers. So it's a, it's a mostly infantry battle. And it is the first battle. So it's designed to be something that's a good one to learn the game on. So since I'm not going to use the simple Great Battles of History rules, we're going to use the whole full boat here in terms of the, uh, the game. So on the other side, they've got some um, medium infantry here. Example, these are tribal tribal units, right? So they have a shield and a spear, basically, it looks like to me. Some light infantry down here, some light cavalry on the one wing. They have some skirmishers over here, more uh, medium infantry, and they've got uh, their commander. Is this fine fellow right here? Bardylus. So now the way the game works, if you're unfamiliar, is the sequence of play here from our player aid. We can take a quick look at it. This is the abbreviated sequence of play. So the first thing you do is you have your leader activation phase, which we'll do in a moment. The lowest initiative rated inactive leader activates. Non-momentum trump may be attempted. We'll talk about this um, in a moment. Then you've got your orders phase, which will start with movement and missile fire. Missiles being like archer, ar um, archers, uh, slingers, javelins, things like that. Then you have your shock combat, which is the physical combat with, you know, basically sword and shield lines bashing into each other and, uh, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, essentially. Then you have your momentum phase where you can, uh, that leader that was just activated can attempt to use momentum and, and roll, a die roll will determine whether they can basically go again. And if they do, the opposing player can then attempt a momentum trump if the momentum attempt has succeeded. And we have the route and reload phase and then the withdrawal phase. So very straightforward. There's a lot of nuance um, within those phases. So if we look at uh, King Philip II here, you can see the numbers at the bottom, 12, 6, and 3. The 6 is his initiative. So initiative is important for uh, basically, at least at this point in this phase, it's important for helping to determine uh, the order in which leaders activate. So he's, a high, he's the highest one in the game, or in this scenario, I should say, not in the game. But in this scenario, he's the top dog. So he will go uh, last, unless we use him to attempt to seize initiative, uh, do, a, uh, do a trump. And then you have, <clears throat> excuse me, the other Macedonian leader. So he's basically commanding the uh, left wing. This is Parmenian. And he was, I'm probably not putting these back in the right spot, but I think he was there. Then on the other side, you can see he's a six, he's a four, and he's a four. So the Illyrians would go first. And there's also uh, none of none of the leaders in this one have it, but there's a line command ability, which would allow them to activate sequential groups together. But they don't have 
that does not there there aren't that many who have that ability in this particular game it's more frequent in some of the other games in the great battles of history series now before we start a couple other things i wanted to talk about on here so the uh, 12 that's his ra uh, range so the initiative is also the number of commands he can give and then three is his uh, charisma and five in the red circle there that is the uh, personal combat rating so if he were to go toe to toe with one of the other leaders or commanders uh, leaders in this game um, that would be his rating for the personal combat between the two so if we let's say we're going to start with our right wing here for the illyrians because they have two fours their two wings are commanded by uh, leaders with four so this one is uh, grabos and you can see the two stars that's kind of his uh his rank then he's got a range of five he's got four initiative and two uh, charisma and four personal combat so he can command units out to five hexes from himself and he was here i think so that would be one two three four five he can command out to this area here now the the overall commander he can he has a range of six so that would be uh one two three four five six so they overlap some and that the same will be true over here these two are identical rating wise i believe although his personal combat's only a three and his is a four so there's a slight difference there so he has five, uh, four commands he can give. So realistically, he's probably going to command the unit he's with and perhaps these two and this one. So you're talking about basically four units, right? Now, as far as the, the units themselves, we have a light cavalry here and another one here. And we have two light infantry. He's stacked with a light infantry and there's another light infantry here. And there's one here as well. And then, um, so realistically, he's probably going to command the center. So mostly, mainly the phalanx, the, well, sorry, the hoplites. This is heavy infantry hoplite. So there, you can see they scan two or span two hexes. And when they move, um, a lot of them can change facing. And facing is important in this game. So this is the front. And these two hexes would be the front uh, zone of control where they could attack from this position. And uh, these guys obviously have a bigger one because they have two hexes they cover. But if they were to try to turn, they pivot where only one side will move. And that's how they basically change facing. So like we could say we're going to rotate this way. So that would be a pivot. And this one would essentially stay in the same hex. And this, ha this side would swing up into this hex. So that's kind of how you would do that. And that counts as a movement point. So taking a look at our cavalry here, this is light cavalry. You can see they have a J in a circle. That indicates they are armed with javelins and can throw those javelins. Then they have the, um, the six is their troop quality. The eight is their movement allowance. And the three is their size. So that's basically like the number. It's not so much number as it is the density of the, of the unit, I guess. Is, is probably the easiest way to describe it. So we're going to move these guys up and let me pause here and zoom in. All right, I put some plastic down, so we're just going to pick up here. So what we're going to do, obviously, is they have the uh, initiative right now. Uh, Grabos here has initiative, so he's going to move his units. Now, we have uh, ranged combat ab ability all along this line here from these guys are all Peltasts. There are uh, six of them ranging from here down the line to here. And then on the very end, we have some archers uh, who are skirmishers. And they actually have a range out to four hexes. But on reaction uh, fire by missile units, you can only react when they get adjacent to you. So he's able to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and stop right here. Now he is subjected. To missile fire and i'm going to flip him over to indicate that he has moved and we're going to roll for our missile fire now here on our missile range chart here you can see the foot archer and that's what he is he's not an indian archer so he doesn't have the asterisk 
it's got a, he can hit out to four, but we're in the adjacent hex because that by rule for reaction fire, you can only fire when they're in your zone of control, which is the uh, two hexes in front of this unit. So th this one and this one, he's in that one. So he is eligible now for uh, reaction fire. And what I could have done and probably should have done in hindsight, and let me correct this right now while I'm thinking about it, is he was here. He could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. And now he would not be eligible for missile fire, but I think he can turn here. I'm going to confirm this, but I think that you get one free... Uh, one free facing turn when you when you move. So he would be here now and not eligible to be fired upon by this guy because he can only fire into, into these two hexes right now. Now we'll also move uh, Grabos here and his unit. This will be our second command and he is going to go into that hex in front of them. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's going to go uh, here. We'll put him here actually. And we'll flip him over. Grabos himself does not get uh, finished just yet because he still has two more commands. But we'll de demonstrate how this ranged combat will work, this missile combat. So I'm going to bring my dice tower in here so you can see the die roll. Now you can see here in our, again, in our missile range chart, we need a five or less to hit. So he's got zero, the, the range, it's a D10, the range is zero through nine. So zero is zero. So that's a 60% chance of hitting. So I'm going to take our die and we're going to roll it. And we got an eight, which means he misses. Now, there were die roll modifiers. I didn't mention them because none of them apply here, as you can see. Um, but over here, you see an unadjusted un un die roll of nine, so a natural nine, results in a missile low for missile types A, capital A, which is what he is. Didn't roll a nine, he rolled an eight. An unadjusted die roll of seven to nine will result in a missile low for missile types J and A asterisk, which is Indian Archer, which we do not have in this scenario. So our javel javelin throwers, rather, if they roll a seven to nine, that results in uh, being missile low. Now, um, because of their location, they can't fire at them because their zone of control is up here. So again, I'm not going to flip Grabos yet to his finished side because he still has two commands he can use. And these are light infantry with a range of five. So they can go one, two, three, four, five here. We'll do that. One, two, three, four, five. He's up here against the Peltasts. Now they both are javelin, javelin equipped so they can both conduct missile fire here. All right, so we'll, let's resolve this now. So these are javelins. They're a little different right? So you have foot javelin, which is what these guys are, and they also have a five. Now, again, you have potential modifiers, none of which are going to uh, apply here because none of these guys are, um, uh, are in any of these categories. Now, we do need to keep in mind a seven to nine result will be a missile low for javelin. And foot javelin units automatically missile no, missile low, uh, no rather when involved in shock combat. And we'll talk about that as well because we are going to enter into um, shock combat. So well, let's roll for our attacker first. Again, uh, five or lower to hit. Seven to nine will be a missile low. He rolls a six, so that's just a simple miss. Now we'll, we'll uh, roll for this guy. He has the same... Same situation. He rolls a five, so that is a hit. So we put one of these uh, cohesion numbers on here. Now his cohesion's a five. It wants your cohesion number. Each time you take a hit, your number will go up by one. So one would become two, then three, four, five. Once he hits five, he becomes routed and will have to run away or be rallied by his uh, commander or leader. All right, so we have one left. And let me flip him over now he also um because he is light infantry i don't know if let me check the rules i want to make sure that i don't know if this is automatically i think medium and heavy is automatically uh shock combat when you move adjacent because of the kind of momentum of the movement forward 
but I'm going to confirm that light infantry falls into that because I'm not sure. And I suspect my memory is telling me they don't, but I'm going to check. Yes, I was correct. That does not apply in this case because uh, that only applies to heavy infantry. So these guys are light, so that does not apply here. Now we can do the same with this one here, which will be our last command. Command number four, I'm going to flip him to, whoops, flip him to his finished side, which looks like this. You just get an F on there. And we'll put that on here for Grabos. And now this guy's going to go one, two, three, four, five. We'll have the same thing with the Javelins. We'll roll the attacker first. A seven. So that's not only a miss, he is now missile low. So here we have a missile low counter. The flip side is missile no. So basically if that happens again, he becomes missile no. Or if he enters into shock combat, that's also missile no. So he gets this placed on him. And now this guy gets to attack. He's going to throw his javelins. He gets a one, which results in again a cohesion loss right there and as i mentioned grabos is now finished so we don't actually have any shock combat which would be the next part of our sequence of play right so you can see here we're in the orders phase for grabos right eligible oppo yeah. opposing units may use orderly withdrawal reaction facing and or reaction fire which we did then we go to shock combat but we don't have any actually yes we do our our uh cavalry can use shock combat um so they're going to elect to do it which i think is they don't have to do it so this is an election by grabos to have them do it so this one will attack here and this one will attack here so we do have a uh, shock no TQ check for situations like this as opposed to the shock um, must shock which is for units that uh, move well let me let me confirm that I'm doing this correctly that's right because they moved they do have to do the, the TQ check so these guys will get it and the, the defender also takes one I just won't mark them so the way this works is you have to do your shock check, which is uh, easy enough to do. So if we look at our here, we have our shock designation, the charge, resolution of leader combat, which we will not have here, the clash of spears, resolve shock combat. So that's the steps of the shock, but there's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more complex than that. There are several phases that you have to go through. So the first thing we do is our pre-shock TQ check. So their troop quality is a six. So they will roll. They got a two, so they're good. Now the defender troop quality is only a three. So it's a little bit more different because these are skirmishers and skirmishers are not particularly stalwart. And they rolled a six. Now, Skirmishers, when they rout, which is what um, happens here, because they failed their uh, TQ check, they they must uh, they're eliminated. Actually, other ones would would retreat. Let me let me clarify this a little bit. So we rolled a six, and the troop quality of the auxiliary is a three. You take the difference, so it's a difference of three. But because their shoot their shoot ah, troop quality is a three, and we took. You get cohesion hits for the difference. So this, they would get three cohesion hits. So we would have put one of these on here. But that three equals their troop quality, which means they route. And when a skirmisher routes, they are eliminated. So that's the full explanation, which I didn't. They also were getting attacked from the flank, which would have been an interesting wrinkle. But we won't get to explain it here. Now, what this will do also is actually give them, give the uh, Illyrians some route points. And route points for skirmishers, uh, non-shock skirmishers, is uh, one route point. So they're going to get one route point for that. And I'll show you the, the route point standings at the end of the video, which or at the end of the turn, which basically, if once either side hits 40, that side wins. Okay, so 
They can now advance, so they will do so. And we'll take the shock, the shock marker away. Now here we have another one with Grabos attacking this unit right here. So it's a six and a five. So we'll roll for the Illyrians first. And they rolled an eight. So they actually take two cohesion hits there for that. So they're going to have two cohesion hits. We'll take this away. And we'll roll for the defenders now. And it's a three, and so they pass. So after this, we'll move on to the next stage. That is the Clash of Spears, which involves looking at this chart and determining what the uh, defender and attacker types are. So the defender is an LP which is right here, it's a type of light infantry. And the attacker is a cavalry unit, light cavalry unit. So we go light cavalry versus uh, LP is column eight. So that's our base column, but now we have to determine shock superiority. So again, if you look LP and LC, there's no superiority, okay? And there's no position superiority either, okay? So now we'll, we will go over to here and we look at this is our shock combat results table. We're going to start in column eight. And then you have some adjustments. So we don't have attacker or defender superior. If the defender is in double, no. If the defender is not shock capable, which would have been the case with our um, skirmishers, but is not the case here. If the attacker is light cavalry, which it is, but and the defender is phalanx heavy or medium infantry, it's not. It's light infantry. And then we have our die roll modifiers. Add the charisma rating of a leader stacked with an attacking unit. Well, Grabos is stacked with these guys, and his charisma rating is a um, two. So his charisma rating being two. Then we subtract. There is no defensive leader. Um, there is no ki de uh, killed leader. And that none of these other ones apply, just the first one. All modifiers are cumulative. So we're gonna we're gonna move the uh, attack column to uh, two to the um, to the right. So it's actually gonna become column ten. And then you have column adjustments. Oh no, that's a die roll modifier. Sorry, die roll modifier. Column adjustments, size ratio difference. So our sizes are five and three. So that's gonna be a two column shift to the left because the infantry has a better size rating. So, and then we don't, we have unit, uh, unit adjustments, which will not apply here and terrain adjustments will not apply here as well. So we're in column eight and then we shift two for size. Um, actually, no, it's a ratio. So it's two to one, but yeah, that is two. So we go from eight to six and we're gonna roll on this column. And we got a one, which is good for the defender typically. And in this case it is. So the um, attacker down here, you can see key attacker cohesion hits, defender cohesion hits in parentheses. So it's three for the attacker, two for the defender. So since he was already at, uh, it's this one. No, it's this one down here. He was already at two. He takes three more, making it a five which is bad news for him. His, his uh, troop quality is a six and they take two. So we just stick a two on here and that ends the shock phase for Grabos. Now, if we again look at our sequence of play, you can see we've got after shock combat, um, well, we would check for breakthrough uh, or collapse and route. That's not gonna happen here. Momentum phase or return to A. So player may attempt momentum or play returns to phase A. The opposing player may attempt a momentum trump if the momentum attempt succeeds. So um, let's try it just so you can see how it works. Because again, this is mostly for example purposes. This is a very basic scenario with not a lot of complexity to it. It's infantry largely there's some cavalry units but it's mainly infantry on infantry there's nothing fancy here it's just two armies uh you know crashing into each other basically so let's talk talk about how momentum works
Well, I, I forgot one thing. We cannot because the leader is in the zone of control of an enemy unit, right? So Grabos is right here, and the uh, Macedonians have an, uh, a Peltast right here. So they cannot, he cannot attempt momentum. So we will save that for later on. Now we go to the next leader in line. Okay, so here's our other leader here. Try and pick this guy up. This is Clytus, and you can see he uh, also has a four for initiative. So he's got a range of four and a troop quality of four. And he was in 1914, which is right here. So four, if we assume that we want Bardylus to command um, the phalanx, the heavy infantry, they're not phalanx, I gotta stop calling them that, they're hoplites. So his, his will start here and go this way, most likely. He can go one, two, three, four. So he can command out to here, plus he has his own unit. Now what we could do is I could show personal combat, and maybe I will. Um, but for now, let's just talk about what we're going to do here. So all of these guys, he has a six. It's a skirmisher uh, equipped with javelins. Then you have uh, medium... Medium, medium. He's turned the wrong way. Should be like that. We have a bunch of medium infantry here, including the one that he's sitting on top of. So we're going to just move these guys up, and we'll start with this one right here. He can move five, so he's going to go one, two, three, uh, four, and stop right there. Now, javelin equipped, so he can fire at our heavy in, um, heavy infantry here. The Hepaps... Hypaspists. I have a hard time saying it. Hypaspists. Um, so he's going to fire at them. So we'll take care of that right now. The Hypaspist is heavy infantry, so it does not have a uh, any missile capability. No missile fire for them. So again, this is a foot javelin adjacent, so their die roll needs to be a five. And trying to find a good spot for this. We'll put it right here. And he got a two, which is a hit. So that applies one cohesion hit here. They are going to um, attempt a shock attack because we're trying to be aggressive here. So now we'll go to uh, we'll go to Clytus here, and he's going to do one, two, three, four, and then again he's got a javelin equipped unit. Philip does not, so they're going to do another missile attack here. And we get a three, so that is also one hit on the uh, Hypaspist underneath Philip's command. Now, this guy will get flipped. I forgot to flip the other one as well, because they moved. We're going to have shock combat here as well, as well as personal combat, because I, want, I wanted to show you that. So let's put a shock on here. And now he's got two commands left, so we'll just continue on down the line, I think. Boy, let's do that. Let's move this guy uh, here. And we'll have some. He's arrows, he's javelin. So they're both fives, and they get to fire at each other. So we'll start with the skirmisher on the Illyrian side, since they're the attacker. So he hits, and that's going to be a one. And then our skirmisher on the Macedonian side gets a two, so they have both hit. Now, uh, skirmishers do not have shock capability, so they do not get to shoot um, to attack each other, so there'll be no shock combat up there. Now we have one more attack left we can do, or one more action or order we can give, and we'll take this middle guy here and go one, two, three, uh, four, and he will again fire. And he gets a hit, so that's going to become a two. But he gets to fire back. And he got a six, which is good for him because he's javelin equipped. No, he's arrows, actually. So he doesn't get a return hit. So he takes a hit. He gets flipped. I forgot to flip the skirmisher over here. He gets flipped as well. Now, their facing always has to be to a vertex. So the, the pointy part, if, you, if you're not aware of what a vertex is... Um, and we will do shock combat with this guy because I wanted to attack this skirmisher. 
Now he has two because in his they're both in his zone of control. He's going to attack this unit and this unit. So we're going to uh, resolve those separately, of course. But he'll ha have to attack here and here. And I wanted him to attack the skirmisher. This one, I'm, it's a little dicey because their troop quality is very high. Um, <clears throat> but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's heavy. It's heavy cavalry, essentially. So now we mark. Clytus as being finished. And now we'll resolve our shock. You can do them in any order. You typically go from left to right or right to left, I guess. In the rules, they recommend left to right so you can resolve them in order and know kind of what's going on. So we'll just do, I want to do the personal combat last because it's a new thing. So we'll start here with this one. Now he has to attack here and here because both of those are in his zone of control. He's facing this way, so it's this hex and this hex. So we're going to remove that, and we'll do our shock check. His troop quality is a five. He rolls a six. So he fails and takes one cohesion hit. The combat still happens. Now this one gets a three, and he rolled a two, so he passed, which is good for him because they route very, very easily. Now we do the, uh, the clash of spears to figure out our initial column. We are attacking through the front. You can see this front, flank, and rear. Attacking through the front. Our attacker is a uh, medium infantry, I believe. Yep. And our defender is a skirmisher. So the attacker is MI. Whoops. MI and our skirmisher is the defender. So we're in column 11, which is pretty close to the end um, to start with. Then you do shock superiority. Again, it's MI against SK. And you see AS, which means attacker superiority. Okay, so attacker superiority. An attacker with uh, position superiority or one that is attacking any unit in column is attack superior. And so on down here. So um, AS equals attacker superiority. So then we'll go over to our shock combat table. And again, we're starting here in column 11. We look here, if attacker superior, double the defender's result. So there's no leaders involved, so we're not going to have any other column shifts or anything. We're just going to roll our die here. And we rolled a 6, and a 6 in column 11 is 2-4, which actually would get doubled to 2-8. So that means this guy has been routed, he's off the board, and they get another... Uh, another point for routes, route point. He can now move up, but we also have to resolve this one. So I believe they still advance, and they get a free uh, facing turn when they do. So they would then be attacking our heavy cavalry in a flank attack. And they get a five uh, is their troop quality. The, the cavalry is a seven. So they rolled a nine, which is... Actually, four cohesion hits, which means that it's a five, which matches their um, their TQ number. So they have to retreat two hexes. So that would be, uh, I think it would go like one, two, because they have to go towards their board, and direct north is that way. So they're going to retreat this way, and they are now uh, routed. So they're facing like that. Put this on here. And we'll slap a routed on there. Now, um, I don't know that they would get to advance here. And that would have been a flank attack, which I was hoping to be able to show you, but obviously I can't. So I'm going to guess, and I could be wrong about this, that they're not, they're not required to advance because they failed their troop quality check and routed. So... I don't, I'm assuming that means there's no combat. Like they saw the cavalry and were like, oh, no, we don't want any part of them. And they ran off. Um, so we're going to go with this one next. So we have another one whose quality is an eight because this is a high pass. This high, high pass bist. That's it. Let's remove this for now. So a six for the Illyrians and an eight. For the Macedonians here. These are high quality troops. So he's going to actually take two cohesion hits prior to the combat. Now the only way that the high pass bisque takes a hit is if he rolls a nine. 
And he rolled a six, so he does not. So now we move on to our clash of spears. And we have a medium infantry attacking uh, heavy infantry. Yeah, they are heavy infantry. Medium attacking heavy starts in six, which is kind of mid-range. And we come to our shock superiority. Our attacker is medium. Our defender is heavy, so there is no uh, superiority there. And then we'll go over here. We don't have a leader. Uh, there's no die roll modifiers because of that. Column adjustment, so size, and I forgot to do that. I always forget the size. There's one thing I almost always forget, and it's size. So it's six against five. So that is a basically a one-to-one -one ratio. So there is no adjustment for that. So we're gonna roll in column six, and they got a zero, which is terrible. Uh, that is three hits for the attacker and two for the defender. So I'm just going to move this here. And they are now at five, which is bad for them. Uh, I need to find a five. And they get a five. Okay, so now we have our last one. So we'll resolve our uh, shock here. So we do our troop quality first. So we have a six and an eight. So six for them is good. Macedonians get a one, that's good. Now we'll check our Clash of Spears again. Again, it's gonna be the same thing, so I already know we're gonna be here in column six. The attack superiority, we know that that's not going to be superiority. We have uh, charisma rating of the leaders for a die roll modifier, so the attacker which is uh, Clytus, his charisma rating is a two, Phillips is a three. So that's gonna be a net improvement of one to the left. So we're gonna be in column, no, it's gonna be a, <laughs> it's going to be a minus one on the die roll. And then for column adjustments, uh, left to right based on ratio of the sizes. So that's still gonna be one to one and we don't have any other adjustments. So we're gonna roll and take, we're gonna do a minus one DRM. And we got a four, which becomes a three. So a three in the uh, six column is uh, two, two. So both sides will take two cohesion hits and they already took one, I think, yes. So they're gonna have three now. And they took two. So there'll be a two. And I think I might have been, I might have had to try here against here and then here against here as well. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to leave that out for the moment. And we're going to do our um, leader combat which is uh, three versus five. So Philip has a rating of five, Clytus has a rating of three. And we'll talk about how this works, personal combat. Okay, so I did forget to do the casualty check for uh, Grabos. So I'll do that right now. The way this works is really simple. You roll a die when a leader is involved in a shock combat and does not have, um, does not have an opposing leader. If you roll a zero, he's killed. If you roll anything other than a zero, he's fine. And we rolled a six, so he's fine. So I just wanted to point that out because I just realized I forgot it. So now we're going to do our personal combat here. So basically it's five and three. So each leader will roll. So we'll roll for Clytus. He got an eight uh, plus three is 11. So he's probably gonna be having the advantage here. And he rolled this, Philip rolled a zero. So that is a difference of uh, six. And then here we look at uh, personal combat differential, right? And you see six plus, say hi to Cerebus, climb into the boat. <laughs> We're heading across the river Styx. 
Our hero has been killed. A leader who has been killed is part of shot combat, has a negative effect on that combat. All right. Um, well, that is uh, really bad. Oh, oh, and when you roll a zero, you roll this to check to see if the leader has been killed. It's not automatic. Sorry about that. So that actually would remove Philip from this scenario, <laughs> which is kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Clytus rolled an eight, uh, which is outstanding. Let me, let me just confirm that that's, that's the correct result here. Um, personal combat. Each player rolls one die to which he adds his personal combat rating. So he rolled an eight and got a plus three. So that is, uh, 11, and then you subtract his opponent's total, which was five, and it was a six. So that means that he was, uh, yes, he was killed. <laughs> so that changes history, I suppose. Philip has been uh, killed. Um, and that puts the Macedonians in a big, big... Uh, so the other thing is the route points. So you have here... Um, you look at his counter, and for leaders, it's five times the troop quality initiative rating, except uh, for Alexander and Darius III, uh, who is, of course, the Persian leader. So five times six is 30. So they're actually at 32 route points right now, which means they're probably going to win this scenario. And what I may do now is simply stop our video here. It's a, of decent length. I showed most of the phases. We didn't have any pursuit or anything. But like I said, this is a very simple scenario. So perhaps I do just this one video for now. And then perhaps I'll revisit and maybe do it on Vassal, one of the larger scenarios. Um, only because it, you know, we're halfway through the month, um, slightly more than halfway through the month. And I do want other do want to get other games involved here. Uh, with 32 route points, even though the the you know the phalanx here gives the Macedonians a, a, an edge, they now only have Parmenian as their only leader. So a lot of their units are going to be kind of off, not having command. And he's a pretty good leader. He's got a range of eight and an initiative of five. So that's pretty good. But uh, losing, <laughs> losing Philip is, is massive, 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 uh, massive loss there. So there you see a good example of how personal combat can really scotch one side's chances of victory uh, because that's a massive, uh, massive uh, swing in route points. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to end it here. Please feel free to comment. I'm sure I'm, I probably screwed something up. Uh, the game is relatively, I wouldn't say it's complicated, but it's not simple by any means. There's a lot of little things to remember as you go through the sequence, but it's not terrible. Um, having said that, I'm sh like I said, I'm sure I screwed something up, so feel free to let me know what I did mess up. But that will do it for this one. I thank you for watching. Please consider liking, sharing. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. Help support the channel, lets me know that people like what I'm doing and helps my channel continue to grow and get more exposure on YouTube, which of course is um, nice, although that's not really the primary reason I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I like it. But uh, yeah, too much digression there. So like I said, please uh, subscribe, like, or share, and or share. But that will do it for now. I'm Joe. This is the Hexed Encounter channel. And until next time, as always, Happy gaming.